In this calculation for N5 electrode techniques, we will be looking at DC motor speed control. This is example 1.11 on page 50. And the example reads as follows. A 300 volt shunt motor runs at 1000 revs per minute while drawing a current of 50 amperes from the supply. The armature and shunt field resistances are 0,15 ohms and 150 ohms respectively. The speed of the motor is increased by connecting a 100 ohm resistor in series to the shunt field. Calculate the new speed of the motor if the load torque is reduced by 80% of the full load value. Assume a straight line magnetization curve. So first of all, by putting a resistor in series with the field winding, we are trying to increase the speed. By increasing the speed, we are therefore going to try and decrease the flux. Now, because the flux is directly proportional to the field current, what this implies is that I field 2 should be smaller than I field 1 in order to increase the speed. Always draw your original circuit. This is a shunt motor, so the shunt winding is connected in parallel to the armature and for our diverter circuit we have a diverter resistance placed in series with the shunt field winding. Fully label your circuit diagram so the motor is drawing a supply current of 50 amperes, the terminal voltage is 300 volts, the original speed of 1000 revs per minute, we have a shunt winding of 150 ohms and an armature resistance of 0,15 ohms. The diverter resistor is 100 ohms placed in series with the shunt field winding and we need to calculate the secondary armature current, the secondary EMF and the secondary field current and all those values are going to change. The uh, full load torque is reduced by 80% so therefore T2 is equal to 0,8 times T1 and just a reminder that the flux is directly proportional to the field current. The equation that we're going to use in order to solve for the increase in speed, it's E1 over E2 is equal to N1 times IF1 divided by N2 times IF2. So to solve for the secondary speed, it is E2 times N1 times R field 1 over E1 times R field 2. Right, so the first step is to calculate the field current for the original circuit and to calculate the field current for the diverter circuit. The terminal voltage remains the same across a parallel branch, so voltage will stay the same. And the field winding is also known as the shunt resistor. So we have the same value more or less for the voltage, but the field resistance changes slightly. The terminal voltage is 300 volts. Now, in the original circuit, we only have the field winding or the shunt winding, if you want to call it that. It's 150 ohms. 300 divided by 150 gives you 2 amperes. In the diverter circuit, we find we have an additional resistor. So we have 150 ohms plus the 100 ohms connected in series. So therefore, it's going to be 300 divided by 450 ohms. And that gives us 1,2 amperes. Right, so you'll notice that um, I feel 2 has decreased in order to increase the speed. Right, now that we've got the field current, the next step is to calculate E1. It's a shunt motor, so therefore E1 is equal to V minus IARA. In the original circuit, we use IA1. So it's going to be 300 volts minus IA1 times the armature resistance of 0,5. One five. So we need to calculate the armature current for the first original circuit. So IA1 equals the original supply current minus the original field current. IL1 is 50 amperes and the original field current is 2 amperes. So therefore the primary armature current in the original circuit is 48 amperes. Right, we substitute that in over there, 300 minus 48 times 0,15, and that gives us uh, 292,8 volts. 
Right, now that we've got the uh, primary EMF, we now need to work out the secondary armature current. And uh, what you'll notice is that we do not have the supply current, we don't have power either. So the only option we have is to use the torque equation. So it's going to be T1 over T2, which is equal to IA1 times R field 1 over IA2 2 times R field 2. We are trying to calculate IA2. So if you substitute everything in there, T1. Now torque 2 is equal to 0.8 times T1. IA1 is 48 amperes. The primary field current in the original circuit was 2 amperes. And we have um, IA2 times I field 2, which is 1,2. Right, so therefore, to calculate IA2, it's going to be 48 multiplied by 2, multiplied by 0, 0,8, divided by 1,2. Therefore, the secondary armature current is going to be 64 amperes. Right, now that we've got the secondary armature current, we can calculate the secondary EMF. And that is the diverter circuit. It's V minus IA2 times RA. The terminal voltage is 300 minus 64. The armature resistance stays the same. So therefore, the secondary EMF is 290,4 volts. Right, now that we've got our field currents and we've got the EMF and the armature current, we can now actually go ahead and calculate the speed 2. All right, so to calculate N2, N2 is equal to E2 times N1 times I field 